In this video demo, we're going to talk about how to implement cascade control. So previously we had set up a flow controller to regulate the inlet flow rate into our tank. First we had our flow transmitter and that sent a signal to our flow controller. And then our flow controller contains the computer algorithm that actually tells this valve what to do. So that flow controller um, lets us plug in a set point for a particular flow rate that we want and then it's telling the valve to be in the right position so that it's regulating that flow rate. Now let's suppose that we wanted to control something else like the level in this tank for example. So if you want to control something you need to have a measure or at least an estimate of it. So we're going to measure this with a level transmitter. We're going to measure the level of fluid in our tank and we're going to design a new controller, a level controller. So the level controller is going to use this inlet flow rate as its manipulated variable. So our level controller will be trying to maintain a certain level that we'll determine with the set point that we plug in. And it's going to have a, a PI algorithm that runs and, and specifies a particular flow that we want. So our level controller will write out its output to the flow controller. So essentially, our level controller will give the flow controller its set point. So in this configuration, the level controller is known as the master controller, whereas the flow controller is known as the slave controller. So how do we implement this in Simulink? We'll go back to our model. So our model has this control loop that we set up previously where we were entering in a flow set point. That flow set point was then compared to the actual measured flow, and when there's a delta, this positive or negative error signal will go to our PID controller and this PID controller will spit out the exact valve position. And remember we modeled that valve using a simple first order transfer function. Well now we've modeled our reactor using a much more complicated um, file where we have a first principles model that contains all of these process dynamics. And if you'll remember this model was nonlinear, particularly because we have our outlet flow as a function of the square root of the tank height. So this is a nonlinearity in our process, which means that it's not going to be quite as simple as our flow model. However, what we are going to do is we're going to approximate this nonlinear process by assuming that it's a, a first order transfer function model, and then we'll base our tuning off of that approximated model. So the first thing to do is to try and get some tuning parameters. If you'll remember, we tuned this process very easily because we knew all of its dynamics and we used these IMC tuning relations. Well, in this case, we don't have this information quite as easily obtained. We don't have a sp specified value for the process gain, and we don't have a specified value for the process time constant. So we want to run our model under a step test and figure out an estimate for the process gain and for the process time constant. And then we'll use those estimates to get some approximate tuning parameters. So when we run a step test, we are going to be changing our process input. So because we have our flow control now in closed loop, the input to our process is actually this flow set point. And we're going to make the assumption that the dynamics associated with this flow control loop are going to be lumped in with the dynamics of the reactor itself and we'll have an overall process for which we'll grab our process parameters. So I've changed my simulation time to 240 minutes and I'm going to be making a step change at time t equals 120 minutes and that step change will go from a flow rate set point of 5 cubic meters per minute to 8 cubic meters per minute. Now if you'll remember from the previous flow control example it took a while for our controller to actually reach that set point. So that's additional dynamics that are introduced into our system, but the simple step test will help us capture those dynamics, at least approximately. So I'm going to go ahead and run my model. So it runs, and it's going to give me an output on tank, tank height. Because tank height or tank level is what I want to control, I'm going to base my tuning off of this. So remember, we made a step change from 5 to 8 to the flow control set point at time t equals 120. And let's go look at the impact that had on our tank height. So as you can see, we reach a steady state here, and then we make our step change at time t equals 120 minutes. And you can see we level off somewhere 
near the end of our simulation at time t equals 240 minutes. So first of all, I want to get the process gain. So I want to find the final and the initial values going from this steady state to this steady state. So here my final steady state value is about 6.24. And my initial steady state value is at about 2.44. So I can use this information to go ahead and find my process gain. So my process gain, K, is going to be equal to my change in tank height divided by my change in flow set point. And that was equal to 6.24 minus 2.44 divided by 8 minus 5. So this is my change in tank height over my change in flow set point. And that number ends up being 1.27. So I also want to get my process time constant. So this, the gain determines the steady state change from one steady state to another. And the tau will help us characterize how long it takes to get from one steady state to another. So if you'll remember in, in the previous controller tuning demo, I mentioned that tau is the value that it takes to get 63% of the way from one steady state to another steady state. So 63% of the way between 6.24 and, and 2.44, sorry. So the 63% value is equal to 4.8. And basically what this is saying is that 4.8 is 63% of the way uh, between 2.44 and 6.24. So we want to find the time that it takes for our process to get to this 4.8 value. So I go back to my step response. It's reaching 4.8 somewhere in here. And as you can see, 4.8 is about right here. And that corresponds to a time of about 17.4 minutes. So this is, it's 137.4 minutes on my absolute time scale. But remember, I made that step change at 120 minutes. So our tau is approximately 17 minutes. Now I realize that this is kind of a, a rough way to estimate, but we're getting close enough and our, our tuning is sort of a rough estimate of what our tuning um, parameters should be. So now if we go back to our IMC tuning relations, this is again for a PI controller where our model is a first order transfer function. Um, We've just made that approximation. You can certainly use more complex models and get more accurate tuning parameters. But in the general case, a PI controller is, is good enough. And a first order transfer function seems to be a pretty good representation of this process. So we're going to use this relationship that P is equal to our process time constant divided by our process gain multiplied by our controller time constant. One thing you'll notice is that the dynamics here are pretty slow. It takes our process quite a long time to get from one steady state to another in terms of the tank height. So we can actually use our controller to speed that process up a little bit. And we'll need to make sure that we choose a controller time constant that is a smaller number than our process time constant. So we want our controller to respond faster than this. So our process time constant is 17 minutes, and I'm going to choose as a design decision, I'm going to choose a controller time constant of 4 minutes, because I want this level controller to reach a steady state, to allow my process to reach a steady state faster than it does in open loop, or when I leave the process uncontrolled. So if I go back to that tuning relation, so P was equal to tau over my process gain times my controller constant. And if we plug in those values, so our process time constant was 17. Our process gain was 1.27. And our desired controller time constant is 4 minutes. So that gives me a P, or a proportional gain for my controller of approximately 3.3. I in this case is equal to P over tau. So that is 3.3 over 
17, which is equal to approximately 0 0.2. So these are the tuning parameters for the new controller, this level controller. I go back to my Simulink model. I'm going to copy and paste this summation block. And I'm just going to connect it. This is equivalent to measuring the tank height. A real process is much more complicated than this, obviously. I'm also going to steal this set point. And now this is going to be my level set point. So I'll put in my level there. And I'm going to um, add in a controller now. So this PID controller, I'm going to now call my level controller. And it's because I copied it from the flow controller, it's going to have those tuning parameters in there. So I'll need to go in by double clicking and make sure I change these tuning parameters to the ones we've just calculated. So it has a P equal to 3.3 and an I equal to 0 0.2. And again, we're not using any derivative action. I will also want to set limits just like we did on our flow controller. These limits aren't going to be valid anymore. So these limits correspond to the output of the controller. So in this case, my controller is calculating what should my flow set point be. And I don't want it to be any greater than 10. And I'm actually going to set a lower limit of 2 on this flow, on this level controller. So now, my input to my flow controller will no longer be a set point that I fixed directly. It's going to get its set point now from this level controller. And I'm going to just go ahead and delete this scope to clean things up a little bit. So now, my level controller computes a set point, which is a flow rate, and it sends that flow rate set point to my flow controller, and my flow controller will now do its best to try and reach the flow rate that my level controller specifies. So again, this is the master controller, and the master controller spits out its output, which is a flow rate, and the slave controller now has to obey the master controller, so it's trying to calculate the valve position that give the flow rate that was specified by the level controller. So let's make sure we're doing a, a good set point change. Before my level was going from it was going to um, it's going from 2.4 ish up to 6.2 ish. So let's try and let's try and do something similar. Let's go from four up to seven, and let's see how well this controller responds, and let's see if it's faster than this open loop process. Okay, so as you can see, the controller it does reach this level. There's some overshoot here. It eventually reaches this level of 4. And then here when we make the set point change from 4 to 7, you can see it does happen a little bit faster. The controller responds a little bit faster here. So let's go ahead and see what that did to my flow rate. So we still want to observe the flow rate here. Okay, so it actually maxed out that flow rate controller temporarily. So we're saying um, it took that flow controller all the way to its max of 10, but the controller it can't go any higher than that because we put a limit on our controller. But you can see this uh, the controller does a better job of helping us get from one steady state to another.